Uh, being an electrician, is, uh, it's just a matter of time before you do get lit up. Uh, if you do it long enough, uh, it's just like a welder. If, you're, uh, if you weld long enough, you're going to get burnt. What if you're a plumber long enough? You're going to get wet. <laughs> <laughs> It's another day and I'm sitting here waiting on my electrician. You can see him in the mirror right there. They don't know how to get up here and I just happened to see him. I'm gonna let them follow me. It's a nice thing to do, I think. I wanna give you guys just a little backstory on Nathan, our electrician. He's a great guy. His crew works really hard. They take pride in their work, which matters to us. And we found him after our electrician that we used previously tragically lost his life cutting a tree on his property. Uh, we were great friends with him. His name was Mike. When we had that hole missing of a great electrician, we asked our building inspector, hey, who's doing a great job on electrical work? And they know, because they look at it, they said, Nate from Morgan's Electrical does a great job. We tried him out and we've been using him ever since. We even got to build his house. Y'all got a whole army of electricians. It's gonna be What's going on? Are you the leader? Are you like the sergeant? I'm just the one that leaves everybody alone <laughs> and does my own thing and gets stuff done. This is Nate. Good to see you this morning. Yep. Glad you made it up the mountain and your truck turns sharper than mine by a long <laughs> shot. One try. <laughs> I know. I was jealous. <laughs> well, you ready to get started? Yes. Play it out? Let's do it. Good deal. So our process here with the electrician, believe it or not, is to just walk through the house and do the electrical layout. We don't have a real electrical plan, right? Yeah, and it's not required to have one for the inspection no. of the permit. That we can walk through, and sometimes where you think you would put a switch on a plan, is solid framing. It doesn't work. This is our kitchen layout, and I was just on the phone with the cabinet guy. There was some changes made. Some, some chicken scratch was drawn. Chicken is, scratch. And But I know what's going on, so that you, we do need to know where the appliances are gonna go. That's pretty major. So we're gonna start yeah. here in the kitchen. Something interesting when wiring for a kitchen is that your receptacles on your backsplash cannot be more than four feet apart. And that's because small kitchen appliances only have a two foot cord. Pull out your coffee maker, your toaster, anything you want, measure the cord. It's only, yeah, anything, it's only two feet. And that's why they have to be spaced so close like that. And before anyone loses their minds in the comment section about how we're doing this, I would recommend having an electrical plan if you're doing a larger project or a high-end project or a commercial project where your electrical system and all your mechanical systems have to share a small space and need to work seamlessly. We can do this because it's a small project and it's not that complicated compared to some of them. Would you rather have a full-on electrical plan or just walk through? Just do a walk through. Yeah. Plans get changed, and if we do a walkthrough, it's kind of what we say goes, you know. I like that. I'm just thinking here, you're at the sink, you're gonna turn on the disposal, you know, you're gonna have a switch close to the sink, either right here or right there. I would say right-hand side would be my pick, and that's how mine is at home, too, and my under cabinets. I got the under cabinets and the disposal right there beside the sink. And so you I, like it? I do, I love it. You see, I actually have the disposal closest to the sink, Morning. Morning, man. I'd like to pull your Bro, for a this <laughs> Dude, this is a game changer. I mean, it's so nice. It's wherever you need it, all the time. <laughs> yeah, 150 to 186 is the coffee bowl counter. Looks like you drew these plans, see that? <laughs> I was doing this during the Super Bowl. I was on the phone with Nate. This was terrible. Are you giving me a compliment or are you making fun of me? Yeah, I'm saying you do a great job oh, writing yeah. stuff down. I don't, I don't think you are. <laughs> for kitchens, they're one of the most expensive spaces in the house for a lot of reasons. The cabinets, countertops, plumbing, but also electrical. There's probably going to be like 10 receptacles in here. There's probably going to be 10 to 12 lights between our can lights, our under cabinet lights. There's also all these appliances. There's also a disposal. If you add all those things up, there's more money in wiring just in this one room than about half of the rest of the house. Easy. Way more circuits in the kitchen than they are in any part of the so house. So you gotta have dedicated home runs. Yeah, for the refrigerator, for the dishwasher, for the microwave, the stove, two small appliance circuits. Uh, lights. Lots. Vin fan. Vin fan. And yep. then not only that, you've gotta have uh, ground fault protected 
dedicated yes. circuit. Yes, the, the as G, well. The GFCI receptacles they're twenty to thirty bucks a piece, and uh, we got to have minimum two of them in the kitchen. All the small appliance circuits have to be GFI Dude, protected. Nate sees kitchens, he just starts seeing dollar bills <laughs> just rolling yeah. out. You guys are doing a good job. That was a little um, out, and I see that you pounded the crap out of it. <laughs> and made it flush. I didn't even have to ask. I was gonna ask, yeah. but I came back and it was already, it was already pounded done. the crap out of, so. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So it's cold today, and we still have to use our touchscreen devices with gloves on. I've learned a trick over the years. See, this doesn't do anything. Yeah. Nothing, but. Nose. Your nose still works. Wow, did you know that Pro tip. That's, that's my phone though, and you just rubbed your nose all over <laughs> yeah. my phone? COVID roulette. No, oh, great. Our electricians are using this drill that has a clutch on it. It's like a truck. Not really. Uh, what that means is that if it catches in something hard, once it feels resistance, it starts slipping and giving. Yeah. It won't rotate no more. That keeps it from all of a sudden slamming Ganging. the handle of the drill sideways super fast and breaking the wrist. Or knocking your teeth out. Yeah, or knocking your if teeth you're out. Getting your face near. We're adding a block heater for a diesel truck here, which I think will be good. You can keep your truck warmed up. Those old old diesel trucks don't like starting uh, in temperatures below 30 degrees. And that's a lot of nights here. Yes. <laughs> a lot in the winter time. So you're telling me you can drive those nails somehow? Yes. I gotta see this. He's gonna show you the wrong way. Yeah, okay, Nathan. I'll, I've only been doing this for a little bit. It's my first day on the job. You got it. Yeah. Wow. Then take your, uh, knife Nine. Or your side cutters and your hammer. And the shit don't bust the box. Wow, I'm impressed, good job. Yeah. <laughs> we are stumped on one switch here. We've got coach light there and there. You want to switch inside so when you walk out the door you flip it, but solid. Oh, look at that. Solid. Yep. And so we're looking around everywhere. It may have to be over here in the dining room. I don't know, there's just nowhere to put it. That makes a lot of sense. We'll put it somewhere though. Oh, what if you do a stack switch, two switches, one for those and one for those? Well, we can't have a three-way on the stack switch. Oh, okay, because that's a three-way switch. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can put them over here. It's just, uh, that's probably the closest place to get that you have to that force out there. One of the most challenging things is to get everything symmetrically spaced and symmetric on the windows and other appliances. And it starts with the truck. And it starts with, yeah, it starts with the floor joists. You got to work around that. But we just spent about the last 10 minutes just trying to figure out what's going to look best with the can light spacing. I'd go maybe six inches. Just with the outside. We're shifting over six inches too to where all these align. You see what I'm saying? I can't remember who I was talking to the other day. They were describing the framing process when they had a designer and electrical engineer involved with the framing because the placement of the lights is what dictated the placement of the yes, floor joists. I've heard of that. And you would actually have to go to that extent if you demanded that everything be perfectly centered on this and that and that. Frame, you have to move the framing during the framing phase to put the lights yeah. where they would look the most yes. symmetrical. Yes, the location Which, of the cans. to me seems crazy. I don't really well, care. Well, I mean, some, some people have that luxury of, of doing that it and will spending the extra time and money and making it happen. And I'm sure it makes a beautiful result. Nobody would argue with that. Yeah, handrails on the inside. So right we'll there. Put switches on this side yep. to miss the handrail. And then we'll three way the uh, stairs. And the hall here. And then we'll three way the uh, hall cans. Yeah. That way, if you come down the steps at nighttime, 
you got a light. Flip on a switch to get you to the kitchen or yeah. to the exit door, wherever you yeah. want to go. Yeah, we're, we're trying really hard here. That's the hard part is to make sure no matter what direction you go into any room, there's a light switch so you don't walk into any room in the dark. Upstairs? Yes, upstairs. Uh, here. We got to get insulation behind this tub before he hooks the drain to that that shower pan yeah we'll do that in the morning yeah how long is a lamp cord they're six foot long generally the tv cords are mostly six foot long so i'm going to go out on a limb and guess that our receptacles have to be every 12 feet yes code. unless from a starting point like an opening in a wall yeah a doorway you got to have one within six foot of that. Then you can go as far as 12 foot to the next one. Okay, so that's interesting. It's based on the cord size. And this is 14 feet across. Yep. So what do you know? We got to put one there because it's more than six feet. Yep. In the you floor. floor right? I love floor receptacles. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Notching the flooring around it. Uh, nah. Anytime you're putting a switch next to a window or door opening, you got to be careful that you don't put it too close to your trim because that would actually interfere with your door trim. So what we do instead, the electricians always do this for us, space it out an inch and a half with a block, and that gives you enough room for your trim to slide by without getting in you know, contact with the switch plate. We don't want to trim around switch plates. Hate that, <laughs> hate that. I just usually trim the switch plate is what I do. That just works, it, it works, but it doesn't look good. We're doing a couple of ring cameras slash security lights, one on the front, and we're looking at the placement from the one on the back. We're thinking right here, but there's gonna be a future hot tub here. And Nate was saying that if there's a hot tub, you can't put a camera on it if it's a rental, like it's illegal. Yes. And I'm beginning to think the reasons that might be actually. So we're gonna cut, we're, they're not gonna rent this place though. So I, I think we could still go with that. Get this dude that likes cyber hacks in China and he hacks onto the Ring account, and he's actually looking live time what their cameras So there could be cyber hackers that could still... I would think so that they could figure nobody. out some way. Isn't that funny that uh, you put up cameras for security, yeah. <laughs> only to think that you could get hacked <laughs> and expose yourself. And someone's staring at you while you're in your hot tub. Yeah. Um, you know, that would be their own fault if they were staring at me. <laughs> heavy breathing. Like, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. We've made our way to the outside of the house. There's a lot of things that need power out here, like our heat and air units. And then we have this section here with a transfer switch. And this is where the power comes in from the power company in the meter base. And this is a cool thing you can do if you're doing a custom house from the start, add an automatic transfer switch so that if you want a generator later, it's already set up for it. And we're also adding a disconnect for a future hot tub. They don't have a hot tub now, but they may want one. The wiring's already gonna be there. So we're doing a few things, thinking ahead to make sure that future plans don't you know, get ruined by no power will come out up into the transfer switch and go ahead and hook it up in the transfer switch. Then we'll come back out of the transfer switch, pop over into the meter, and then hook up in here. It makes it a lot cleaner application if we do it now versus if we do it later on down the road. When do you want to come put one of these in my house, speaking of that? Yeah. <laughs> the later option? Yeah. Is we it twice as expensive? It just takes longer. We have Seriously, to get a hold like of the, uh, the wires out of here out of the utility side, Yeah. and we have to uh, make them long enough if we can't replace them with uh, Polaris's to make them long enough to come over here in the utility side of the transfer switch. And then bounce it back. And then bounce it back over here. So yeah. that's a lot of wires going through one How much does it bucks. cost to add just this transfer switch at this stage? If at this stage on new construction, they're probably looking at uh, roughly six to $800 to okay. buy the transfer switch. Plus and labor. And plus labor. So, so 10,000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're not familiar with the automatic transfer switch, what it does is if you lose power, it automatically transfers where you're getting power from the grid to your generator, but it also stops power from feeding back from your generator onto the grid. Because when the power guys come to fix the power lines, they don't want your power feeding back and they don't know it because obviously that could cause major problems. Or kill somebody. Or kill somebody. I didn't want to say that, Nate, you know? <laughs> We're trying to keep it light on this channel, you know? It's gotta be all doom and gloom. <laughs> Man, we're trying to do a show about construction. Nate's talking about people getting killed. Man. I know. I mean, come on. I, I, I Glad come he on, didn't Nate. go into too great a detail, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll bet Nate's been electrocuted, though. A couple times. 
How? Oh. <laughs> Matter of fact, uh, oh, this is just, YouTube gold. Hold just, on, just just this last Saturday, I got, I got lit up uh, <laughs> two twenty. Yeah, uh, the ground was exposed, and I reached to grab the wire, touched the ground, and lo and behold, the ground was energized as well. Oh, that's a good one. So that's how I found out that uh, <laughs> I thought I could handle the wires, them being safely wire nutted, yeah. but the ground was energized as well. That's so. a good one. That's a good trick. Mm, yeah. We're in the bathroom here, and since this is a custom home, we're adding one more custom receptacle behind the toilet seats for a bidet slash heated toilet seat, and that's all the rage these days after the huge toilet paper shortage. You remember that? Mm -hmm. When you couldn't buy toilet paper? So that's a nice thing to have in place if you want to do that. And I, I'm going to say they're, they're pretty nice. I tried one the other day. They're pretty fabulous. Are they really nice? Yeah. No, it was like hot water on your... Instead of, tool, instead so, of cold toilet paper? So how long was you sitting on it after you started that one up? This is one of the boxes we're using, and it is fiberglass. And this is called a single gang nail. Sounds like a cowbell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it does. It's called a single gang nail on because it has nails. And Nate said he likes these a lot better than the plastic ones because they're more rigid and they don't lose their shape if you nail them on to a stud that's twisted. And these are the deep ones. So you have extra room for more wires and wire nuts back there. And he says these are just better. And they cost more, but that's what he likes. We're just about to finish up our electrical walkthrough with Nate. And we've got all of our lights placed, all of our switch boxes placed. And I wanted to give you my philosophy behind how we're choosing where and how many lights we're gonna put in. And my philosophy is that it's really easy to put a bunch of lights in now. It's just framing. That's if you can afford adding extra lights now. It's a lot easier than having to add extra lights later when there's drywall and insulation, and you don't have to use all of the lights. So I like to go a little bit overboard, I would say, with how many lights we have in each room, and you just don't have to use them all, or you can dim them. It's really hard to add them later. That's my philosophy. I like to have more than you need. While Eric was going over the electrical details, the rest of the crew was putting in extra blocking and nailers for drywall everywhere where they were missing. Let's go check that out. We got some TV blocking right here. You know how much of a pain it is when you hang up on those big, huge brackets for your TV and you go right into the drywall? Well, not here, baby. Not here. You can try to guess what that is. Toilet paper. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Ding, ding, ding. So fridge is going here. Yep. So sides of the panel for the fridge. Got some nice yep. blocking back there to screw that into. Left and right. We also put some blocking in for towel rings. It's always handy to be able to just screw that ring right in there. It's easy. Nice. I don't like the way that rigid saw sounds. No, it sounds like a, like a dead I think they just need a new blade. They probably got the same blade. So another thing that we add is baseboard blocking. Because what's going to happen is this door trim is going to come down here and cover most of this. So we throw an extra piece in there to make sure that we got something solid to uh, hit the baseboard to. The end of the baseboard. Yeah, of course. What else were you thinking? Stairwell? Yeah, stairwell, we got some fire blocking, uh, four code. We also have some handrail blocking, which is nice. And we also have some skirt board blocking. We got, we got it all, baby. And last but not least, we got some blocking for the edge of the shower flange there. Hey, thanks for building with us today. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new or at least had a great time watching the video. If you did, please remember to get subscribed, give us a thumbs up, that helps us out. We'll see you on the next video.